Welcome back everybody, OK Fixer here. Um, we're back on the ruckus. Um, got some parts, uh, so let's move forward on this. First thing I did is I put the battery on uh, a tender uh, overnight, and uh, we'll see if it came back. Uh, I put my uh, positive on first. Always put your positive on first. That way if your wrench on the negative contacts the frame, you're not arcing. Yeah. Lost my tool. Hate that when I lose my tool. I know I lost my bolt. Let's see here. Let's see if this battery has come back. Um, run. Here's our break. There we go. Uh, here's our two contacts. I do have uh, fuel pump pumping. Let's see if it. All right. There you go. Since our battery came back, <coughs> we can leave that in there. Should run the vehicle. Should be okay. Uh, it's one of those gel cell jobs. And uh, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out that. So without further ado, let's get this out of here and see if we can't, uh, yeah, let's see what you got going on here. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I don't know, I hope this, I hope this cap is on the off position. Because if I bend and beat this all back into submission, and it's not, and I put the cap on it, yeah, I have to wait for my new cap maybe. But we need to bend this all back into submission. Uh, the owner isn't interested in buying a new uh, gas tank or can't find one or whatever. So I think what we're going to do is, since this one's still serviceable, we're just going to bend this into submission and then put the cover back all on it. Since... Uh we have to fidget with this, uh, the tanks. Um, yep, there, the gas lip. Um, I'm going to drain the gas out of it and uh, fix this lip, and then I'm going to put it all back together, but I'm not going to put any gas in it. And I'll just stuff a rag down in it until we get our uh, gas cap because uh, when I get my gas cap at least I'll have a locking gas cap that I can unlock in the event that I put that other gas cap on there I have no recourse to unlock it no way to unlock it I should say uh, so let's get the gas out of this and start uh, bending it
now the cap fits on quite a bit square uh, I had to beat it all into submission and then it was the hole was too small so I used uh, this it's a kind of a pipe expander kind of a thing I believe it's for exhausts but straight and exhaust so that should that should work okay I've got the cap just in there and just turn just a little bit so it should be fine uh, it'll come back out uh, or it should anyways there we go so once I get a a locking cap uh, I'll be able to uh, put that on there and actually lock it so it should be alright okay let's put this back in the bike and we'll put the cover on put the tank in and hook the wire up to it for the fuel light and then this piece fastens down with a bunch of machine screws So somebody put uh, some loss and bolts or something, and they put uh, these through here with the nylock nuts, but they didn't put any washers on there, so we're going to put some washers on there as well. So let's get those all fit up in there, and we can put the seat on, maybe. and our seat lock and uh, check out our uh, our key lock for our uh, put it, we'll put our new gas cap on to and check that out So I parked this in my back garage and um, I started it up and rode it back here. And I rode it around the yard a little bit and something's amiss. It's still not right. Um, when I first started up and you gas it, it runs pretty good. And then just after the choke comes off, it just falls on its face. So. We have a fuel issue here. Let's find out what it is. I have to take it all back apart again. And I'm thinking it's either the fuel filter or uh, main jet's plugged up. But here's the deal. The main jet has a bigger orifice in it than the idle jet. And it idles really nice. So what gives there? We'll have to... We'll have to... Uh, We'll have to take it apart and have a look. Let's bring it into the garage. See, it just falls right on its face. There. Let's ride it around a little bit and see what it's like. It's not really doing it now. Let's uh, 
we're going to give it a dead stop like that. Wow, I'm going 30 miles an hour. It's, it's that, it's that like dead spot. Almost like the fuel filter's plugged up. Use the gas out of the float bowl, and there isn't any more in there. Can't suck up anymore. I think it should have more power than that, though. Alright, let's take it into the garage, have a look. Okay, let's have a look at the fuel filter. Let's see here. Nope, it's not the fuel filter. And it's not the fuel pump either. Because this is Japanese, nothing electrical will ever go wrong on it. Things like switches and pumps and stuff like that are tested one million times by monkeys. And then once they pass the one million mark, then they're put on the scooters to make sure they run good. Well, there she is in all her loveliness. Um, I'm probably not going to take this out of the bike because I'd have to disconnect the... I don't know if I want to do that or not. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I might do that. really don't want to, but we'll see. Oh, yeah, that's not going to be too bad. Okay, let's get at it. Um, I took this screw loose and this screw loose. I took this plug off. Uh, this, I think, is the uh, electric enrichener. And then it has, <laughs> if you can believe it or not, a throttle position sensor, uh, probably to give feedback to the ECM uh, <laughs> on uh, on where the where the choke is at. Because you know you can't you can't pull out a choke and push it back in. <laughs> Good God. Okay, uh, it's got a hose over here. Uh, the fuel hose is right here. And uh, then it has like a, uh, probably a crankcase ventilation hose, possibly something like that right there. So we'll take those off also. Looks like two fuel lines, one going in and one going out. And uh, kind of in a, in a loop. So, yeah, pretty neat. No, no, I was wrong. Uh, uh, going in and going out, it has a circuit that goes around the carburetor. Uh, and it is, if you look down there, there's blue. Do you see the blue? That's antifreeze. There's our fuel line right there. There's no return on the fuel line. It has a water-cooled carburetor. Because it's sitting over the engine. Keep it from getting too hot. And then it... Uh, uh, you know, the gas evaporating in it. Trick. Only the Japanese. Okay, uh, somebody has stripped this screw already, so with a hacksaw I turned it into a Russian machine, machine screw. And you think it's lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. But it's not. Alright, um, there's not going to be a lot wrong with this carburetor, so uh, we'll do Captain Obvious first. And that'll be the float bowl. Um, our fuel is coming in here. And uh, this is a liquid cooled circuit that goes around and cools the carburetor. That's just, that's just way cool, Junior. Don't think I've ever seen that. All right, 
float bowl is impeccable. Very clean. Uh, you know. Let me get something smaller. Perfect. I don't see any crap in there. Take the main jet out and have a look at it. Most of your Japanese carburetors, most carburetors in general, are set up like this. The main jet. And you have an emulsifier tube right here. And this is your this would be your idle jet. Your main jet's fine, nice and clear. And uh, your emulsifier tube is going to have the slide of your uh, of your carburetor going through it. Um, the slide needle, whether it be a CV, this is a, a continual velocity carburetor. Continual velocity CV. Constant velocity, continue. I don't know. CV carburetor, which has a diaphragm under this and a spring. And there might be some gum of sorts, maybe. Very clean. And you want to look and make sure your diaphragm's not ruptured. Yeah, it probably isn't. It's very clean. Mm. I don't know. Very nice. Very clean. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like I said, the the uh, the uh, bogging is is minimal. So let's have a look at your enriching circuit. And take this screw out. And then this should just come out of there. Should have an O-ring on it. And uh, this seems to be fine. Seems to be all right. Yeah. I'm gonna put this thing back together and put it back on the car bike, rather. I don't think there's anything wrong with this carburetor. So, maybe it just needs to be, I don't know, driven? It's very slight, the bog. It's just very, maybe it's just because it's 50 cc's, I don't know. Maybe it doesn't have, you know, any get up and go because it's, <laughs> it's so tiny. I'm not used to something that small, I don't know. Pretty trick though, huh? matter if we put our main jet in first. I don't know if it will or not. Probably not. I'll put it in there anyways. A little speck of crap right there. Just for giggles, let's look at our let's look at our idle circuit. But I know there isn't going to be anything wrong with this because it idles.
I don't know if you can hear that, but you can blow through it and you can see through it. There's another circuit here also. don't know what that is. Right here. I wonder what that is. It looks like it looks like it says don't touch me. <laughs> That's what it looks like. <laughs> okay, let's put our diaphragm and our slide back on. It has a uh, it has a uh, Captain Obvious on it. Again, this should just slide in there if it jams or if you if if wailing or gnashing of teeth is in the is in the uh, equation to this. You're doing it wrong. So I think that should be just fine. Cap. Should fit on there just perfect. Should go something like something like that. Yeah, about like that. Oh. I know you guys are going, hey, dummy, put the spring in there. Hey, put the spring in. Thank you, I appreciate that. This uh, little needle sits right up in that float, kind of like uh, it's got a little slot. Fits in there just beautiful. How trick! What a trick little Japanese piece. Yeah, yeah, it was perfect. Aren't you going to clean that up? Nah. Well, now I know, you know. If it was all full of fudge in there, then, you know, at least the gas wasn't in there very long. That's good. Parts left over? No. Hey, that looks like it. The throttle position sensors just and the and the cooling circuit that goes through it. This is so cool. Okay, let's get it back on the bike. All right, we got her all tucked up in there, I believe. Pretty straightforward. Pretty easy. Um, Okay, that sounds good. That sounds all right. Uh, incidentally, uh, before I started this, I took the air filter off and uh, I wanted to check it. It's a little dirty, but it's not bad. But when you gas it with the air filter off, it's just completely dead. It needs that restriction in order to run, which is kind of strange. Let's go take it out for a ride, see what happens.
You know, I'm thinking something like this would have more balls than it does, but it doesn't. You know, 50 cc's isn't a lot. Um, and it's still, it's still boggy, kind of, a little bit. So, well, we eliminated the filter, fuel filter, gas, uh, the gas filter, the carburetor, and the air filter. Uh, might be uh, spark plugs fouled in it. It kind of spark knockies a little bit, but, you know, I don't know, I don't know what are these things are supposed to, the performance is supposed to be like. Uh, so, anyways, uh, when we go to put all the uh, accoutrements on, all the locks and stuff like that, I'll ch check that spark plug and see if, uh, see if it's uh, fouled up. That uh, bad gas might have fouled up the spark plug or something. Clean it up and uh, see if that doesn't improve it any. Maybe just driving it. I don't know. We got these parts today for the ruckus. Uh, this is a little uh, deal that goes on top of the ignition. And um, if you look at it, it has um, off, on, and in the middle it has seat. So this has a three, three position, and it has three uh, connectors like the other one did. Um, and evidently it had an electric seat lock popper or something. Well, this one doesn't have the electric seat lock, so it only has two wires going to it. So we have to figure out which wires... Uh, that go on it, but uh, got all of this here for about $34. So, let's put it on the bike. Since uh, the wiring harness was cut off, <coughs> and there's um, a plug, and the plug was broken off, and then there's two wires with little connectors, but they won't slide on, on there sufficiently, so I'm going to solder two wires one long and one short so we're not close to each other and uh, cut those two terminals off and uh, uh, crimp a female and a male on the other side. Now I'm doing opposites so that uh, if the few if if but it doesn't matter because you won't be able to so it doesn't matter yeah never mind <laughs> I was gonna say I'm doing opposites so that in the in the event that he forgets his keys he can just unplug these and plug them in and uh, it will light the bike up, but the uh, steering will be uh, locked. So, but it, it, anyways, that's what I'm doing is I'm, I'm uh, putting connectors on there uh, because that wiring uh, plug was broken and missing. Well, unfortunately, uh, because it had been swat up front, uh, the plastic doesn't fit right on the key. So, but the key does work. However, of course, the lock doesn't work because there's pieces missing in it. <laughs> it's it's one of those things, you know. And uh, and the uh, there's uh, the uh, all the deals for the nuts uh, are missing. The bolts for the side cover, and you know, coming up or trying to make something like that. <sighs> yeah, you know, the deal was, will you get it running for me? And I did. And now he has a, uh, uh, oh, a helmet lock, and he has a key, uh, although it doesn't lock the steering wheel because there's parts missing. Uh, the gas cap is another issue. It doesn't work right because, uh, because the gas tank's boogered up. So, you know, what are you going to do? I, I, guess, I guess ride it, right? Yeah, just ride it. <laughs> Steve, there's your Honda Ruckus. Now all you owe me is $34. I had um, someone say, gee, at least the, 
the labor on that should be a hundred dollars alone well you know it's a friend of mine and uh, best man at my wedding and stuff so yeah I can I do this free there you go all right see you guys later bye